Have you ever asked yourself the question, can you unlock Polyatomic the Aki way? Well, the answer to that is sure, sure. And to do that, we need to get 25 headshots for the three marks for rifles that we're doing today. And the reason why I'm only doing three is because we're really close to Orion here. And I want to save those extra spots for some snipers I want to get done for our finale. But the Aki way for doing it is we're going to make these as fast as possible. And we can't forget the canted laser. Never, never, never. So really quick, let me show you all the builds we're going to be doing for the three marksman rifles we're doing today. Here's my SAB-50. Here's my SPR-208. And here's our Lockwood Mark II. And just in case you're curious, here's the class that we're going to be using for these marksman rifles today. And we got some headshots to get, so let's go ahead, hop in, and try to get these camos done. All right, they threw us in a game in progress on shipment, so you already know this game is going to last about two seconds, but it don't matter. We're already getting a headshot. And we're starting out with our SPR here today because I already had some headshots on it, and I'm going to just go ahead and crank out the rest of them. This is our, our warm-up weapon. Weapon. But I haven't used the canted laser in a while. I used it really early into my like Orion grind. I used it on some like SMGs and some ARs. And for those, those are semi-automatic. So a little easier to aim them. Oh, as I'm hitting double headshots, you know, the, the first shot accuracy don't matter as much because I can always just continuously fire until I hit them. But on this, it's going to be a little tricky. So far, we're off to a hot start. I'm getting a few headshots here. Let's hope we can keep this momentum because it feels weird aiming in and it just going sideways instead of like seeing the iron side of the gun. Can't, it's a little hard to get used to. But even with all like the, the fast ADS attachments I have on this, it still kind of feels a little bit slow. Like, I feel like the tilt of the gun takes a little longer than it would just at ADS normally. But it's still killing pretty reliably. I haven't gotten a hit marker yet. Knock on wood. No hit markers today, please. I have a, I have a feeling the Lockwood's going to be our hit marker machine. Ooh, there we go. Get domed. Another domer. And there's actually quite a few marksman rifles in this game. I completely forgot about most of them. It seems like the marksman and the battle rifles are very forgettable classes. So I just went ahead and picked some of my favorites for when I did the grind. But there's like, I think six marksman rifles, something like that. There was a lot. I felt like I had to scroll when I saw them. And just like I predicted, we made it about like, 12 kills into this game before it ended. That's great. Throwing people onto games in progress on shipment is so pointless. I remember right around launch of this game where everyone was like clamoring for that. I think it was the SPR and the SBA or the SAB50. I don't know. It's all a bunch of random letters and numbers to me. But the, whatever the two marksman rifles were that you had to use to unlock some snipers with, everybody wanted them nerfed. I think everybody just saw so much of them that they just thought they were insanely OP when they... I think they pretty much work like every other marksman rifle in this game. Like, they should be pretty decently fast. Maybe not the most range in, like, one shot kill within, like, I don't know, 30 meters or less from, like, torso and up. Like, I just think that's how the class works. It's like every year, everybody's surprised that shotguns are powerful up close. But the marksman rifles have always been kind of like a sleeper class for me. They're always, like, fun to pull out. They're more like iron sight snipers in my eyes. It's like, you pull out a sniper, you have a scope on it, you, you use that when you want to do long range, you know, maybe some quick scoping, some trick shotting, all that. Like, you just want to goof around and have fun. The marksman rifle is the one you bring out when you just want to shit on people in, like, close range, but still have the feel of a sniper. I feel like no matter what weapon I'm using here on shipment, I'm getting shitted on. And can't forget the crack. Never, never, never. Oh, come on. There we go. We finally got a kill. Not a headshot, but just trying to make sure this thing still works. And by this thing, I mean my brain and the way it connects to my hands for me to aim. There we go. That's a headshot. We can't get into a headshot rut. Not today. I'm not allowing it. Every single video we do for these... It's I start out kind of decent and then just go downhill from there. You'd think I'd get better over time, but we always end up getting into a little rut where we're getting absolutely zero headshots. Doesn't seem like it's happening for the SPR. And also, if you haven't noticed, we went ahead and we, we, up, we upgraded the camera. Uh, I was lucky enough to have a sibling that had a, a Sony A6000, I'm pretty sure it's called, and they didn't want it anymore. Asked if I wanted it. And I was like, fuck yeah, give me that. But I, I'm sorry for the gap and uploads I, I was away over the weekend then the, the lions had a game which we'll talk about in a little bit i want to make sure that i can use all of my colorful language when i'm speaking about it and then also it took me forever to figure out how to get the the camera set up get all the settings right i'll probably still tweak with it here and there but i think i got it looking decent enough to record with it for today but i'm super happy about it i was looking at like what this looks like and what the webcam looks like. And it is a giant upgrade. The The webcam looks so grainy and filmy. And I, I try my best to make it look as best as possible with that webcam. But 
can only go so far with it, you know? And that's like the first major upgrade I've made to this setup in a long, long time. Outside of me tweaking my computer constantly because I just wanted to shut down for no good reason. And also, speaking about that, with my computer just turning off for no reason, it has not happened in a while, knock on wood, just in case I'm jinxing it right now. But it felt like just overnight it went away. It, has, it hasn't happened in... I think over a week now. So I still don't even know what the issue was. It felt like I replaced everything. I changed like every setting and then it just randomly stopped doing it. Like it was just trolling me. So hopefully it don't happen again and I can live my life in peace. Oh, okay. This guy with the ride shield needs to turn for me. Oh no, he doesn't need to because we're already done with this gun. Let's go. That's 25 headshots. Easy. Now onto our SAB 50. I need somebody to kill me right now so I can switch guns, please. Please kill me. I love how whenever I want to die... I don't. There we go. Perfect. It's like they know exactly what I'm trying to do and they try to do the opposite. And by that, I mean the game. Like it, it knows. It's watching. It's listening. Ooh, hoo, hoo. already starting off great with this. Not a double headshot there, but two headshots total for the gun already within the first 30 seconds of using it. Well, I call that progress. All right. Now, this is a, a very important gamer guy talks about sports moment here and this might be one of our last for a little bit because the line season has ended so i, I want to get this out there and while i'm getting assassinated holy shit that was brutal he stabbed me in the neck multiple times so the lions played their final game of the season unfortunately we did not make the playoffs what we had to happen was we needed the rams to beat the seahawks in order to get into the playoffs because the Seahawks had a tiebreaker over us. I've already explained this one before. You guys are probably sick of hearing it, but we didn't make it into the playoffs, but we did win our game. And I'm going to try to be as respectful as possible because I've seen some, you know, ill-tempered Lions fans being very rude. So with all due respect, fuck the Packers. Now that that's out of my system, I can talk about this calmly. So even though our season just ended and, you know, we're not making the playoffs and we barely have a winning record, we went nine and eight. I am very happy with how this season went. You might be thinking to yourself, Joe, why? Why Why are you happy with how this season went? You didn't get to where you wanted to be. We got exactly where we wanted to be. Because through my 23 years of living, we have never had meaningful football played in Detroit in the, the month of January, December, or maybe like one year we have, maybe like 2014. But that's not the point. The point is Detroit has been very miserable or, or, or its fans have been very miserable in the football sense and other sports sense too, but we're not talking about those. Like we've gotten very little success. Our organization has not really cared too much. We've never gotten the pieces or the parts together to even make a run or have a, a football team worth a shit going into any year. Like the Lions season would start with the regular season starting and it would end after week one. Like lion season is between the draft with us having a very high pick in it because we suck to week one where all of our expectations go out the window because we get like blown out. But what we have right now is hope. We have a vision like the, the bar has been raised from this year. We have a, a coaching staff that seems like they actually care about the players. They care about the organization and they want it to move upwards. And it seems like the players are like reciprocating that. Like they actually feel like Detroit is a place where they can be and they can play meaningful football and they can do something here. Like there's a spark here, there's hope. And we haven't felt that, well, at least I haven't felt that in my lifetime ever, which is absolutely beautiful. Exactly what I wanna see. And the best part about it, even though we're not making the playoffs, we, we got Seattle into the playoffs by beating the Packers. Now I have some friends out in Seattle, you know, Washington, whatever. So I'm happy for them. I would have liked to make the playoffs, but beating the Packers is just a sweep. The Packers have bullied our division for years and years and years. They've basically only had two quarterbacks in like double my lifetime, two Hall of Fame quarterbacks. And it's about time that they, they get the shit end of the stick. Because not only did we beat the Packers last night, but we beat them earlier in the season too. If you don't know, divisional opponents in football play each other twice a year and we swept them. And I wouldn't feel so strongly about this, but Packers fans my entire life have shitted on me, have said awful things about the Lions, you know, and this is just all that pent up years of getting dunked and shitted on that I want to release. I, I have seen people say like, oh, that was the Lions Super Bowl. Congrats. You, you won a regular season game. Hell yeah, that was our Super Bowl. That was absolutely phenomenal putting an end to the Packers reign 
in our division. They are like third in our division right now. The only reason why they're not last is because the Bears decided to do even worse. But at least they have some hope going forward. It seems like every team in our division has something to look forward to, not only this year, but in years to come, where it seems like the Packers, the only thing they have to look forward to is a quarterback carousel, assuming that they don't have a, 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 another Hall of Fame quarterback in Jordan Love, like sitting there behind Aaron Rodgers. Like, I will be so mad if the Packers get another Hall of Fame quarterback after Aaron Rodgers is gone. Oh, I, I'll lose my mind. But even though like at, at the end of the game, it, it's it was like very emotional for Aaron Rodgers where he's like walking off the field all slow and he's not like swapping his jersey with like any player. Like he said, I'm going to keep this one. There's been a lot of rumors and speculation that he might retire. And I don't think that's going to happen. I think he plays for at least one more year. I think that was more like him wanting to give it to like Randall Cobb and him being emotional that that was the, his last game at Lambeau with Randall Cobb. So they've played together for a while and he just came back like this year. It's whatever. And like I said, with every other team in the division having something to look forward to, the, the Packers are probably losing Aaron Rodgers within like a year or two. And then what's going to happen over there in Green Bay? I don't see anything really happening because they couldn't even put a team together around Aaron Rodgers. He has all the talent in the world. One of the greatest quarterbacks of all time and they got one super bowl with them like i'm not saying anything because the lions haven't ever been to a super bowl but they they missed their championship window like their window is, is shrinking right now it feels like it's it's barely even cracked open with aaron Rodgers there whereas the vikings are already in the playoffs they've they've clinched their spot they're in there they're ready to go the bears have uh what seems to be a rising star quarterback as well as like the most cap space in the league and the number one overall pick and the lions have two first round picks coming up in the draft they have rising talent all of their stars on the team are very young or just finished their rookie season this year so it feels like we have a lot to build on on top of like a change in culture like it, it feels like we're a brand new team so i'm just excited that the team that has shitted on my team for the longest time is just completely out of it now and it seems like every other team's rising up like it's complete change of the tide oh and we got this gun done let's move on to our lockwood and the sweetest part about the lions beating the packers this weekend was that every single like analyst and pundit picked the packers to beat the lions holy shit can i aim but every single pundit picked the packers to beat the lions by like multiple scores like this was the game that they had to win like they can't lose this game to that team and on national tv the lions got to show everybody just who we are and who we've become so i'm really fucking hyped about it and i, I can't wait till next year and i think that's all i had to say about the lions game so football rant over but i i've been browsing the subreddit for modern warfare 2 recently yeah, I go on Reddit and it seems like a lot of the fan base, at least on there, because I know these are just like echo chamber communities where the opinions of the people like posting on Reddit aren't really all the opinions of everybody playing. It's just like the loudest voices are the ones that get heard, I guess. But I've, I've been seeing like the war between people being like, oh, like people that are ADHD as hell grinding camo is saying there's no content in the game where a game in 2008, nobody cared about any of that or whatever. It's like people saying, like defending the lack of content in this game and the people saying like, we just want more out of a game that we paid for. And I feel like I'm on the more what we paid for train because I feel like there's not a whole lot to do in this game, at least for me, outside of grinding camos. Like I, I want to play some more wars. I want to play some more DMZ. I want to play some search and destroys and I will get to those things. But in the multiplayer side, what am I supposed to do? All we got is the same maps that we had in Modern Warfare 2019. Those are the only two maps anyone ever plays. There's nothing new here. It just feels like there's less modes, less maps, and just less to do in this game compared to modern for 2019 but maybe that's not really a fair assessment like maybe this game is just a victim of circumstance because modern for 2019 came out like right around the start of the pandemic everyone stuck at home and it was like the first like really good cod game to come out on pc and just one of the better cod games to come out within this modern cod era so I feel like it was the perfect storm for that game to succeed and do well. And this game is trying to like, I mean, maybe not trying to ride off the bootstraps of it, but it, it feels like that's kind of what they're aiming for. Like they want to recapture that feel of Modern Warfare 2019. And I don't know if they can do it. And as somebody who plays this game a lot and makes content for this game, I don't know what they can do to fix it. I, it feels like just add more, do more, but like 
I don't even know what I want. Obviously, I want like more maps and, you know, some of the older fun modes that I've played in the other like COD, like in Modern Warfare 2019. We want those back, but that seems like the bare minimum. It seems like we're not really getting a whole lot of content until that premium content update comes out like next year like the $70 update that's going to have like a bunch of shit in it. It feels like they're they're holding off until then. But all I know is if this game doesn't have like a content packed season two, I don't know how it's going to do for like a whole another two years. So it feels like a lot of the fan base is just holding out for more stuff. Like everybody's already completed the battle pass. I don't know how long this season even goes for, to be honest. If I think it goes for like... I don't know, maybe another like month, maybe plus or minus a few weeks into that. But from everything I, I've read on Twitter and Reddit and all that is just a lot of people have like shelf this game until more stuff comes out. Because I know I've taken my time with the camo grind. That's mainly because I, I figured something like this might happen. And my favorite part about the game is grinding camos. So I wanted to, you know, make sure I had something to do. After I get it done, it's like multiplayer is, is kind of cooked for me. Like, what are you guys doing right now in Modern Warfare if you already got the camo grind done? Or maybe you don't got the camo grind done and you're still working on that. I just want to see, like, the different ways people are, are playing this game and how do you feel about the content in this game? Do you think there's enough? Do you think there's not enough? What do you think they should add? Do you think the SPMM needs to be changed? I think a lot of people share that sentiment. Do you think the time to kill should be tweaked? I don't know if there's been a COD game to tweak the, the time to kill during the life cycle of it because I really checked out around, I don't know, Advanced Warfare and I was still really casual back then. And I checked back into Modern Warfare 2019 and I started playing it like consistently. But how, what can they do to help this game out? Because it feels like it should be further than it is right now. So I felt like they put together a pretty decent campaign. Warzone's all right. Like it, it's fun, but not for the fun that Warzone 1 was. I don't know if they can ever get back to where Warzone 1 was. That feels like a tongue twister to say almost. But I definitely feel like they need like a resurgence map because I know that was insanely popular playing on like Rebirth Island. I don't know how they do that with this. If they just make Rebirth Island again or they just make a similar small map or if they just bring back Verdance, which I don't see them doing. I, I feel like they've doubled down so much on not having Verdance back that they won't do it again. But it would be cool to see a little throwback playlist. And honestly, I don't think Verdansk was like the craziest map. It was just that people associate Verdansk at the time where Warzone came out and everyone was playing it. And it was at like the top of BR to where they think like that map was amazing. I personally think Verdansk and like Al Mazra are, are pretty similar maps. I think Al Mazra may be a little more balanced this time around compared to Verdansk because all I remember in Verdansk was everybody just going straight towards the airport and sitting on top of that like comm tower you know there's probably some other issues with it but Verdansk was still fun to play on Caldera I think looked really cool and they had some cool ideas but it just didn't play too well and it was on top of that mixed in with Vanguard which already wasn't a very popular Call of Duty game so I feel like they're kind of in a impossible position because what somebody might want from the game somebody else might hate from it like what community and what kinds of people are you trying to get interested in your game and keep interested i feel like it's the question that the devs have to ask themselves i feel like the devs have already kind of made it clear on what community that they kind of want to stray away from and i think that's like the streamer high kill super weird movement community like they've already nerfed out slide canceling which has been in cod for i don't even know how long they got rid of a lot of like the different movement options like they got rid of like reload canceling like anything that has a cancel in it has probably been canceled by the devs but in response to that they upped the ttk so movement and like a lot of the jumping around corners and playing super fast kind of gameplay like the rushdown gameplay has been nerfed significantly and it kind of feels like in warzone it's really really difficult to like 1v4 a team or whatever like the, the fact that you can't play while running, the, the time to kill being so fast to the point where if you get into like a 1v1 and somebody takes off a few plates from you, you're basically dead. But then what community do they want to hold up? Like it, it feels like they, they really only cater to people that are new to the game. Like they kind of want to squeeze out or push out the people that have been playing it in the way they've been playing it in favor of the more casual crowd of 
people that were like, oh yeah, you know, let me pick up the new COD. Let me try it out a little bit. Or the, I haven't played COD before. Maybe I'll, I'll test this out and see how it goes kind of crowd. Like it kind of feels like they want the people that maybe weren't as good at the game before to feel like they're doing better. It definitely caters more towards like the play safe, campy crowd over literally everything else. And I've still failed to adapt. Like the only time I really like sit in camp or whatever is like going for like long shots or like mounted kills or things like that. Like I only really play however my camos like tell me how to play. <laughs> like I'm just here to try to get some progress on things. Like I want to work towards something while mindlessly playing it is my whole way i play it i don't know cod's just in a really weird spot right now and i figured i'd, I'd voice all my terribly put together thoughts and opinions on the game so i really do like this game and i've come to like love the franchise after not really playing it too much previously and i don't really know where it's going from here like it's the the future is unclear of the game and it feels like it i'm moving in one direction and the game's moving in another but I think we just got our guns done. That was 25 headshots with this, I'm pretty sure. I'm going to back out of this. And let's make sure that we do have polyatomic on the three marksman rifles we decided to do today. There's our SPR. There's our SAB-50. And our Lockwood is done. Sick. So now we're at 47 out of 51 Orion. But let's go ahead, hop in game, and see what these marksman rifles look there with polyatomic on. All right, here's what our SPR-208 looks like with polyatomic on it. Very nice. Got the little canted laser there almost as long as the peril because it's basically sawed off on this one. This is our Mark II carbine. Probably the worst one of the bunch that we did today, but still pretty fun. One of my favorite weapons from Mama for 2019, and I'm glad it's still pretty decent in this one, or at least as decent as it can be. And here is our SAB, probably one of my favorite guns in the game really fun to use even while canted I, th I felt like we were still doing pretty good with it but there you have it we got our camos done the aki way and now we are just on the doorstep of getting orion uh in our next video we will be getting it with our snipers i'm gonna try to do it with a trick shot so hopefully i can pull it off but i'm gonna have to end the video here hopefully you guys like seeing my ugly mug in hd and uh, i appreciate all your support i appreciate you guys watching and i will see you guys in the next one later